Infinite scrolling is a common feature you see on many websites. It replaces the need for pagination and instead continually loads in more data as you scroll down the page. In this video, we'll learn how to easily create this infinite user scrolling component using Vue 3 in a library called ViewUse. For those not aware, ViewUse is a collection of over 200 Vue composables aimed to help make development easier. I definitely recommend checking it out for a ton of resourceful composables for your Vue applications. ViewUse has a composable called Use Infinite Scroll, which will be perfect for creating our infinite scrolling component. So let's get started. Now if you do enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like on it as this really helps out the channel. Also if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that for more content like this. Alright now on to the video. First I'll assume you have a view through project set up. If you don't, then you can just run the command npm init view at latest and follow the steps to generate a new project. Next, we'll want to install ViewUse into our project with the command npmi at ViewUse slash core. And just like that, we'll have access to the entire ViewUse library. Let's create a new component called InfiniteScroll.View inside of the components folder. Then we'll want to import this component into the home view, which is the default route of this view application. To mimic how you might use this component inside of an actual project, we're going to be using a free service called Dummy Data to get fake user data from an API. So inside of the source folder, let's create a new folder called API and then create a file called getusers.js. To make the API call, we're going to be using Axios. So we'll need to import this into the file and we're also going to want to install it into our project. Feel free to use the built-in fetch API, I just prefer Axios. Now let's create a new function called getusers. We'll make this function asynchronous and accept two parameters. Limit to set how many users the API returns, and skip for helping with paginating the return data. Inside the function, we'll create a new variable called users, and we'll set this equal to await axios.get, and pass in the API URL with template interpolation to be able to dynamically set the query params of the API with the parameters from the function itself. Lastly, we'll want to return users.data.users, and then export this function. Inside the infinite scroll component within the template, let's create an unordered list and add a ref with a value list L. We're adding this ref to the unordered list to reference within the script later on. Then inside of this unordered list, we'll just add a list item. To make things look better, I'll also be adding some simple styles to style the unordered list and the list items. Within the script of this component, let's first start by targeting and gaining reference to the unordered list. We'll be using this within the composable from view use to enable infinite scrolling detection. To do this, we need to create a variable name that has the same name as the ref value we set on the unordered list and then set it equal to a ref with a value of null. Next, we're going to create a variable called users to show to determine the amount of users we want to display initially and then also when retrieving additional users as we get to the bottom of the list. Then we'll want to retrieve users from the API to display on the page initially. Let's create a new variable called users list and set it equal to a ref. Within this ref, we want to call the function we created called getUsers, which is asynchronous. So we'll use the keyword await and pass in the parameter of limit, which would be the variable user to show, and for the skip parameter, we'll set this to zero. In order to use this function within the component, we'll need to import that within the script as well. Since we just made this component asynchronous with a top level await, we need to wrap this component inside of a suspense tag within the home view. If you are unfamiliar with how suspense works, I created a separate video on this you can find inside of the description. But the TLDR for this video is that suspense has a slot for the default content, which will be the infinite scroll component, and then an additional slot for fallback content while the asynchronous task is waiting to resolve. We'll want to create a new template with a fallback slot and within here create a paragraph tag with the value of loading. Now back within the template on the list item, let's add a v4 loop and iterate through the users list variable to output each user within this array. Inside the list item, we'll just output the first name to keep things simple. Inside the browser, you can now see we have these initial users displaying. Each time we get to the bottom of our list, we want to retrieve additional users. To do this, let's create a new asynchronous function called getUsersOnScroll. 
Inside this function, we want to use the getUsers function to obtain new users to display within the list. Let's create a new variable called newUsers and set it equal to await getUsers. For the limit parameter, we'll use the users to show variable, and for the skip parameter, this time we want to start at the next user after the last one within our list. An easy way to do this is by referencing the amount of users we currently have within our users list array. For example, if the length of the current array is 15, which is what it would be by default with how we have things set up, then the API using the skip query parameter would bypass those 15 users and start at the 16th. So for the skip parameter, we'll set this to users list dot value dot length. Lastly, we just want to then push these new users to the current users list. The final thing we need to do is listen for the user to reach the bottom of the list, then retrieve new users using the function we just created. For this, we're going to be using the use infinite scroll composable from view use. Let's start by importing this into the script tag. The use infinite scroll function accepts several parameters. The first parameter is going to be the element, which will be the variable we created earlier called list l. The second is a callback function each time you hit the end of the list. Within this callback, we want to call the getUsersOnScroll function. The third is for scrolling options, which accepts an object. One property that we're going to define is called distance. This defines the minimum distance between the bottom of the element and the viewport, or in our case, the list. If you don't define this, then the default is going to be 0. I found that setting the distance property to 10 works the best, but feel free to play around with this setting. There is also some additional options you can explore on the view use docs for this composable. Now inside of this application, as we continue scrolling down the list, we're going to have more users continually loading in. Now sometimes APIs take longer to resolve depending on the connection. To take this component a step further, let's add a loading feature to the component to inform users more data is being fetched. We'll want to create a new variable to track when data is being fetched, and we can call this fetching data, and we'll set it equal to a ref with the initial value of null. To simulate and actually see this delay clearly for this tutorial, inside of the function, let's delay everything from resolving by 1.5 seconds. To do this, we want to await a new promise and use what is called a setTimeout method to make the promise resolve after 1.5 seconds. Then, at the start of the function, we want to toggle the value of fetching data to true, and after the data has been retrieved, we'll set this value back to null. Really quickly, I'd like to mention if you are using this component inside of a real application, I'd advise wrapping the API call inside of what is called a try-catch block to catch and handle errors correctly. So inside of the template beneath the list item to keep things simple for this tutorial, we'll just add a new paragraph tag with the content of fetching more users, please hold, but you could add something like a loading spinner instead. Now we only want to display this message if the fetching data variable is true. So we're going to want to add a vshow directive and set it equal to the fetching data variable. And back inside of the browser, as we scroll down our list, once we reach the bottom, we're going to briefly see the loading message, and after the delay, more users will be added. Alright, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Also, let me know what your thoughts are on view use. I definitely think it's a great resourceful library, and I'm looking forward to using it more. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.